We live in a time where food is not as natural as it once was. And we may not be fully aware of exactly what we're putting in our mouths. Food is so versatile, it is essential and needed for us to survive, but it serves so many purposes such as fulfilling our guilty pleasures or just to simply satisfy the munchies. Food is probably one of the highlights of our daily routine, and all we have to do is simply lift the fork up and enjoy. However, there are some foods that you might not want to ever eat again once you know what is in it. In this video, we will cover the top foods you will never want to eat again once you know what the ingredients are in it. So hit that like button, subscribe, and let's get right to the video. Number one, hair in your bread. Okay, so you see a piece of hair in the bread you're eating. Okay, no big deal. You think it's probably a piece of your own hair that shed while you were eating. Or maybe it's someone else's hair. Before you take that another bite, you should hear this. Now, according to Vice, some commercial bread contains human hair as a common ingredient. Human hair contains L-cysteine, which is a non-essential amino acid added to baked goods to help the dough be processed faster. Human hair is a natural protein source and is a lot cheaper to use instead of producing it in the laboratory. The hairs first dissolve, then the L-cysteine is extracted through a chemical process which will be used by bread producers to produce bread. But it gets even wilder. A lot of this hair that's being used actually comes from China. Your morning toast might come directly off the floors of barbershops and salons that is harvested from China. The Vice article also advises to stay away from breads that are from fast food restaurants as they've been reported to use L-cysteine. According to naturalnews.com, one of the ways to identify this is to check the loaf of bread to see if it contains L-cysteine as an ingredient. But you wouldn't know if it's the type that's produced in laboratories or the ones that come from someone else's ponytail. The best way to be sure is to buy your bread fresh from a bakery. Number two, carbon monoxide in packaged meat. The very same deadly gas that you have your carbon monoxide to detect for might be used in your packaged meat. And listen to this, it is used as an ingredient. You buy meat at the grocery store, you look for steak that's bright red because it looks the freshest. But many supermarkets use a special gas in packages. So what is the purpose of carbon monoxide as an ingredient in your packaged meat, you might think? Well, the answer is to keep the meat a bright red color to make sure it's more appealing to would-be consumers. The process involves packaging the meat and then gassing it with a harmless dose of carbon monoxide, keeping the meat looking bright, red, and fresh for up to two to three weeks. How long through this process can you make a piece of meat continue to look bright to look, red? To look red. Mm -hmm. A long time. A like long time. Two so days, three days. Two weeks, three weeks. Week. The issue with the meat when exposed to oxygen is it will turn brown, of course, but with the help of this sneaky ingredient, it can keep it looking fresh and red even after its past intended best by use date to the point of spoilage. In this video, you will see two cuts of lamb left out at room temperature with one with no gas and the other one contains carbon monoxide. After a few days, the untreated meat becomes darker and less appealing, whereas the treated meat still looks bright red and fresh. Although sources say the levels of carbon monoxide are so small it is safe for consumption and has been approved by the FDA and the USDA, it's still something that's hardly made aware to consumers, as I even didn't know that this practice even existed until I did my research for this video. If I was buying meat that contained carbon monoxide, I think I would like to be informed of this. Do know that there's gas in some of this packaging? Uh, I don't believe they do know. They don't know that. It's Shed. like in the army, you know, don't ask, don't tell. And this is why we are informing you. So do us a favor and click the share button and share this video with your friends and spread the word. Number three, mercury in your tuna. Tuna is one of the most popular ingredients in a sandwich, but did you ever wonder what the ingredients in the tuna is? According to an article by Healthline, tuna may potentially contain high levels of mercury, which is a toxic heavy metal. The most common reason for it is just simply the polluted waters that the tuna swim in. Mercury tends to be caused by events such as volcano eruptions or industrial activities that might emit mercury buildup in the very oceans where the tuna we eat resides. In this graph, it shows the different species of tuna and the most common levels of mercury per three ounces. Since mercury in tuna is so high and widespread, a single three ounce serving might be enough for an average adult's weekly mercury dose according to Healthline. Too much exposure to mercury may result in damage to the nervous system, kidneys, and digestive tract. This might also receive a thumbs down from sushi lovers, but we're all about informing on this channel. Many of the fish such as tuna, especially the bluefin kind, mackerel, and sea bass used to make sushi contain high levels of mercury. 
But like all foods, it's best to eat in moderation to limit exposure. Number four, beer brewed with fish bladders. Question of the day, if I were to ask you what you think beer is made of, take a few seconds and think of your answer. Did you think yeast, barley, and malt? These are quite common ingredients for your basic pint of beer, but what if I told you there's something a lot more fishy in beer? So now the fishy ingredient in question is called isinglass and basically is a gelatin made from dried swim bladder of fishes. The key purpose for adding isinglass into beers is because it helps clarify the beer making a nice, clear, golden, bright colored pint that everyone likes to kick back with and enjoy. According to BBC, this practice dates back all the way to the 19th century. This poses a problem for a lot of vegetarians and vegans who are guzzling down the pint at the bar who aren't aware that this beer might contain fish ingredients. It's the more you scratch the surface of the fish's anatomy, the more everyday products you find fish in, including one of the nation's favorite, booze. How many people know that? I found out there's this product called Isinglass, which apparently they use in beers. It comes from a fish, and somehow it gives beer its golden glow. Guinness announced that it is going to stop using fish bladders in its brewing process starting next year. In response, Guinness drinkers issued a statement saying, What? Beer lovers like myself are pretty much caught by surprise with this one. Okay, so I'm not a beer snob or anything, but excuse me, Mr. Bartender, my beer smells kind of fishy. Number five, beaver butt in your ice cream. Not the ice cream. Ice cream lovers, let this serve as a warning that you might want to proceed with caution on this one. There is possibly an ingredient lurking in the shadows, evading your alarm bells for all these years, especially for the popular ice cream flavors such as vanilla, strawberry, and raspberry. Now, if you ever browse the ingredients on the ice cream, you might see something that says castorium. This is where your genius tomato light bulb should go off, but not in a good way, as castorium comes from the castor sacs of a beaver's anal gland. Castor sacs are a scent gland that beavers use to naturally mark their territory in the wild, but the twist is, once the castorium is processed, it produces a very pleasant smell that is used for the flavoring of the ice cream. Now, according to the FDA, they state that castorium is generally safe for consumption. What's even more surprising is that they allowed most flavoring additives found in nature to be labeled as natural flavors on the ingredients according to an article by Prevention. The best way to avoid eating beaver anal scent glands is to check the ingredients for castorium. It's best to go for the ones that say vanilla, vanilla extract, or vanillin. I guess is one case of where kiss my ass does hold true to a sense. The world of foods and its ingredients can be shocking and an eye opener for sure as you saw the ones in this video. Hopefully if you choose to continue eating these foods, the image of it will not be in your mind when taking a bite. If you'd like to see a part 2 of this video, let us know in the comment box below. Feel free to share this video as it will help our channel grow, donate any amount if you wish, subscribe and smash the like button. Until then, stay informed. And genius tomato out.